at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1, it says, Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a person as an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things God's wrath comes to those who are disobedient. Therefore do not be partners with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. This is why it is said, wake up, sleep, or rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord add his blessing to this reading and hearing of his holy word. Well, there was a certain man once who, who reached the age of retirement, and so he decided after retirement he was going to move from, from the inner city to a place out uh, that was a little more uh, rural. So he moved to a small town, got a nice little house, just uh, two or three doors down from the local high school, and there he spent his first few weeks in retirement in peace. But then the new school year started, and uh, one afternoon of that first semester, he, he, he heard, and then looked out his window and saw three young boys coming down the street, beating merrily on all the trash cans as they went by, you know, just beating on the trash cans. And they did it the following day, and then the next, and then they did it for a week until uh, one day the man decided he needed to take some action. So the next afternoon, he hears the boys coming down the street banging on everything, and he goes out to meet them, and he says, hey, hey, I love you kids. You guys are great. You're having fun. In fact, I used to do the same thing when I was your age, and so you really brought me back a lot of nostalgia here. So, so I wonder if you can do me a favor. If I give each of you a dollar each day, can you just come by and just keep doing what you've been doing? And that added up to an extra $5 a week for those kids, so each of them. So they said, sure, we'll do it. So uh, the next day they come through just banging on all the trash cans. And then for the next few days, they do the same thing. And each day the guy is out there waiting for them with a dollar each. Well, one afternoon he's there and he stops and says, boys, look, look, with, with inflation being what it is, m my money doesn't go as far as it is. I can only pay you 50 cents each to, to do what you've been doing. And of course they weren't impressed by that, but they said, sure. So they went about it, and then for the next few afternoons, uh, the man was out in front each day, giving them 50 cents each as they came through banging on all those trash cans. Until one day, the, the man comes out and he says, look, I, I seriously don't have as much money as I used to. I can only pay you 25 cents a day to come through banging on these trash cans. At which point, the, the one kid who was, seemed to be the leader of it responded angrily, that's it? You really think we're going to waste our time banging on all these trash cans for just 25 cents each, each day? You must be a fool. No way that's going to happen. We quit. And so this foolish man, who was actually very wise, then enjoyed peace and serenity for the rest of his days. You see, if this man had been foolish... He would have gone about, he would have gone out and just started shouting and raging at those young people and fighting them, and, and they would have just kept banging those trash cans for the rest of his life. But as we see here, living wisely as the man did brings peace and serenity. It brings light to the world. You know, last week, we started looking at the Apostle Paul's direction in Ephesus, or Ephesians chapter 5, for believers 
to live as children of light and to allow God's light to shine through them into this dark world. And we saw last week that one side of living as children of light means there are things we don't do or things we stop doing. And Paul, we saw, summarized all those things as impurities. He wrote that we were to get rid of every hint of impurity in our lives. And he named some of the impurities there, sexual immorality, greed, uh, coarse talk, obscene talk, and language. That's all part of what it means to live as children of light. Today we live, uh, we look at the other side. And just as, as Paul used one idea, impurity, to describe what we don't do as we live as children of light, so too he uses one main idea to describe the things that we actually go and do do when we live as children of light. You ready for it? You know what he called it? You know how he summarized it all? Here it is. Live wisely. That's what we do. We want to live as children of the light. We live wisely. You see, in Ephesians 5.15, Paul writes, Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. See, living as uh, children of light means we live wisely. Cast out impurities and live wisely. That's the whole picture here of what it means to live as children of the light. Now, we know that many uh, humans... Uh, have trouble living wisely. In fact, many of us live unwisely. Uh, we're aware that many uh, people live instead as fools. Uh, most of the time, we try to convince ourselves of the foolish ones. It's always someone else. We, we'd like to think, oh, we're never the fool, but come on, we know better. Uh, I mean, for example, George Eliot, who, who was a British literary author, who, who wrote, I think most notably, she's known for Silas Marner, which I, I, I barely remember reading my first sem semester in college. But George Eliot once said, I'm not denying the women are foolish. God Almighty made them foolish to match the men. <laughs> Uh, and unless you think that I'm just taking the women's side there, here's this one. A foolish man tells a woman to stop talking, but a wise man tells her she looks beautiful when her lips are closed. <laughs> I, I think Thornton Wilder kind of, kind of gives us a more even-sided uh, assessment here. Thornton Wilder, who was a playwright best known for Our Town, uh, but he once said 99% of the people in this world are fools. And the rest of us are in great danger of contagion. You see, we're all foolish at times, men and women both. We know this. If we desire to live as children of light, we all need Paul's guidance on how to live wisely. So that's what we do today. We look at the different instructions Paul gives us in, in this passage out of Ephesians chapter 5 on how to live wisely so that we can be God's light in this dark world. First, living wisely means we are filled with the Holy Spirit. See, in instructing his readers on how to live wisely, Paul writes, be filled with the Spirit. Honestly, we can do nothing and in absolutely no way live for God without his Spirit first living in us. We know this. <clears throat> We know when we become believers in Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes and live in, lives in us, and that's how we receive the Holy Spirit. But it's not just a simple thing. Paul doesn't merely say, have the Holy Spirit, or you know, all followers of Jesus have the Holy Spirit. He says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, what that means is hinted at by, by what Paul kind of pairs it with in this passage here. You see, in the entirety of Ephesians verse 5, 18, Paul writes, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. See, aside from the outright warning to his readers about the foolishness of getting drunk, and that's part of the message, whether you like it or not, but Paul is actually referencing getting drunk to paint for us kind of a word picture about what it means to be filled with the Spirit, what it looks like to be filled with the Spirit, because when someone is drunk, everyone else around knows it, right? It's just out there for everybody to see. There's no doubt about that. You know, one of my favorite stories about someone being drunk is from one of my cousin's weddings when I was younger. I think I was in junior high at the time. And at that time, some of my family members, they always loved going to the family weddings and the receptions just so they could get outrageously drunk. And so at this wedding reception, some of them did. And my uncle, who, who will go on unnamed because, hey, I love him and I'm not here to slander him, but he, he, he was one. He, he got sloppy drunk. And he was so drunk that he was out there dancing around and entertaining everyone like, like a big old fool. And at one point, he, he loosened his necktie from around his neck. He took it off and kind of put it around his head and let it hang down at the side of his head. And he went around crowing, I'm Rambo, make my day. Which is something, of course, a foolish drunk person would do because everyone knows that make my day isn't Rambo. Make my day is Clint Eastwood as Dirty Harry. 
Anyway, my, my aunt was right there, his wife. And at this, this, this final bit of foolishness, she just gave him, she gave him one of those looks that only a wife can so effectively give a husband, right? And he saw it immediately. My uncle was just like quickly and cheaply. He just quickly snatches the tie off his head and he just sits there and he's all calmed down then for about 15 seconds because he'd been drunk, right? The point is, my sisters and I still talk about that story, laugh about that story, because we all knew my uncle was drunk. When you're drunk, everyone knows that it just comes out of you in every which way. It's quite obvious to everybody around you. Paul's kind of indicating here that being filled with the Holy Spirit should be like that. Everyone should be able to tell right away that you are filled with the Holy Spirit. The joy of the Spirit should just pour off you in every way possible. So if we want to be wise and live as children of light, we must seek to be filled with the Holy Spirit in such a way that everybody knows. See, being filled with the Holy Spirit means you are fully obedient and surrender to Him. The Holy Spirit is in control of your life. You cannot be in control of your own life and be filled by the Holy Spirit at the same time. Let me say that again. You cannot be in control of your own life and filled by the Holy Spirit at the same time. You can't do it. See, when you first followed Jesus, the Holy Spirit of God came into your life first. You were filled, right? But the language used by Paul here in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 indicates that after that, being filled by the Holy Spirit is a continual thing. You have to keep being filled by the Holy Spirit. It's like the water in my swimming pool at home. I, 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 we, you know, we keep thinking, oh, it's got enough water, but we have to keep putting water in. And then we go back the next day and it's like for some reason, you know, we've got to keep putting more water in it, right? You are commanded here in verse 15 to be filled by the Holy Spirit over and over and over again, which means since you're commanded to do it, it means you got a choice. You're going to do it or you're not going to do it, but you're commanded to be filled. So you must choose to be filled. You must choose to submit to God every day, every hour, every minute, every second, in every situation. That's what being filled by the Holy Spirit is. See, when you are filled by the Holy Spirit like this, Everyone will know it, right? They'll know, hey, that guy is always going to do exactly what the Holy Spirit says, or don't try to convince her. Otherwise, she's going to do what the Holy Spirit, she, she's going to do the things that God approves of. It, it's just they're overflowing with the Holy Spirit. That's what it means to live as children of the light. It's what it means to live wisely. Second, living wisely means we understand the Lord's will. Take a look at uh, Ephesians chapter 5, 17. Paul writes, do not be foolish but understand what the Lord's will is. The implication from Paul here is that when we don't understand what God's will is, that's just foolish. We're just being fools. You know, in this, we kind of see a cycle that goes with the previous point to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You see, when you're filled with the Spirit, you're at a place where you can more readily experience and interpret God's will for you and, and your life in this world. And when you're experiencing, you are living out God's will, then you desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So it's just like an upward cycle. You've got to understand what the Lord's will is. Now, understanding God's will is not something that just happens. Sometimes I, we like to think it, just, it should just happen, right? Have you ever talked to someone who is facing a decision or is in a difficult situation in their life and they don't know exactly how they're going to get out of it or how they're going to handle it? And they say something like, oh, I just wish I knew what God's will was. And that's all they do about it, right? As if just saying it is going to bring understanding, as if knowing God's will is just something that's just going to happen because you want it to. See, if you're not filled with the Spirit, it's not going to happen that easily. You have to work at it. Paul indicates such when he instructs his readers in verse 10 to find out what pleases the Lord. He says, find out what pleases the Lord. Find out. Hey, that means there's work, right? That means there has to be an investigation or a search or a pursuit to find something out. There's work you need to do in your daily life, meaning every day, because that's what daily means. Every day. How much work are you putting into finding out and understanding God's will for you and, and for you in this world? See, we put a lot of work and effort and resources into a lot of other things in life that are, well, they're not necessarily bad, but they're perhaps silly or non-consequential. Maybe even some would say it's foolish. I mean, case in point, I think I might have mentioned here one or two or 50 times that my all-time favorite television show is Star Trek Deep Space Nine, best show ever made. 
Well, knowing that, one year for Christmas, my sister and her husband, they got me two vintage action figures of two characters from that show, uh, still in the packaging, still in card, re really nice. Now, I never really wanted these before, never really paid attention to them being out there, but since I now had these two, Oh, it just got in my head that now I have to have the whole collection. I, I got to get all the main characters uh, from this show and these action figures. So I became obsessive over like the next month or two uh, about going online for hours, tracking these things down, finding good buys and, and buying them personally, getting them, scarfing them up before somebody else bought them out from under me. I spent lots of money, spent lots and lots of hours searching these things out just so I could get them and put them on a shelf in my room where no one other than me ever sees them. It's fun, kind of silly, and perhaps some would say foolish. What if on an ongoing basis, we all spent that much time and effort and resource on finding God's will for us in this world, on seeking to be filled with His Holy Spirit. That's what it would mean to live as children of light. Where would such a search start? Well, Paul gives us hints, right? Verse 9, Ephesians 5, he writes, The fruit of light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. See, understanding God's will so that we can live wisely as God's children of light means we take every opportunity available to seek out God, to meditate on Him and His Word in the Spirit, asking Him to show us out there in what's out there in our sight, what's out there in our grasp, what's out there in our ability, what is good and what isn't, what is righteous, what's right and what isn't, what's true and what isn't. You see, followers of Jesus need to ask God to show them what is good and what is right and what is true in any and all circumstances because sometimes they don't always know right off. Believe it or not, you don't always know right off. You need to ask God. Be wise. Ask Him to help you understand the difference between right and, and, and wrong, good and bad, true and not true, so that you can pursue the thoughts and attitudes and actions that bear good fruit in his light. That's God's will. Living as wise children of light means we are pursuing God's will in this manner so that we can go and actually do it. We can go and live it. Third, living wisely means we are thankful. We are thankful. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20, Paul writes, Always... Always give thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The expectation here is that we are always giving thanks to God. We are always thankful before our great God. Now, usually this topic is reserved for November, right? Thanksgiving time. Which is great because uh, if we haven't really been thankful up to then, then the holiday rolls around to kind of remind us, hey, we need to be thankful. But the downside to that is that we tend to discuss thankfulness only in November. But those who are living wisely, shining God's light into this world, are those who are thankful every day of the year, including July. See, we have a tendency to be unwise but by falling into a lack of thankfulness to God, don't we? And when it happens, I think it's because one of two things is usually going on. First, maybe we think we're entitled uh, to more or we're entitled to better. We think we deserve good things. We think we deserve better things, right? Look, my buddy James in James 1.17 tells us that every good thing comes from God. Everything good. Everything good we have, it comes from God. But God's not required to give us anything. See, without uh, what he has already given us, salvation in Jesus, we are pathetic, sinful wretches. We don't deserve anything more from him. But we forget that. So when God, out of his grace and mercy, does give us good things, well, we would just take it. Instead of acknowledging, hey, this good thing came from God, instead of being thankful for it, we just take it, and then we want more, right? Because we think we're entitled to it. Or second thing that might be going on is we're not thankful because we're too busy looking at uh, what others have, others who have more, right? Look, when I see the million-dollar weekend homes 
that some people in this area have along the river, I can start to feel like, my, well, my home's not so great. All I have is this, this house, right? And I become unthankful. <laughs> but then I go to Haiti and I help build a house out of rubble, which is just refuse that nobody wanted. They couldn't get rid of it, right? We built a house out of rubble that's smaller than my dining room, where I always have more than enough food for eight people to live in. I become thankful real quick for what God has given me. See, we need to live wisely. We need to stop looking at what other people have and start giving thanks to God for everything He has given us, none of which we deserve. See, being thankful to God actually helps us to avoid the impurities that Paul instructs us to stay away from when we want to live as children of light. See, we covered this verse last week here, but deliberately last week, we did not look at the last three words because I knew this was coming. Look, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 4, nor should there be any obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. See, Paul's saying, instead of all those impure things that you are tempted to fill your life with, with specifically in this place, uh, obscene talk and joking, and rather than filling your life with uh, impure things, give thanks. Give thanks. See, the idea here seems to be that when you fill your life up with thanksgiving, you, and when you're full of giving God thanks and looking to what He is giving you, you don't have room for all those other impure things. When you are tempted by impurity, start giving thanks. Start listing all the things that God has given you that you don't deserve, that you haven't earned, starting with Jesus Christ and going from there. It's just unwise not to do so. Paul says, live wisely, give thanks. And finally, living wisely means we live lives of love. We live lives of love. See, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 2, Paul writes, Walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. See, Paul indicates here that if you want God's light to shine through you into this dark world, you've got to walk the way of love. Walk the way of love. And it's not love the way the world defines it. It's not just pretty red and pink hearts, and it's not romance and lust, and it's, it's not just, hey, letting everyone uh, do whatever they want so that we can all get along, let's all love each other. No. What Paul is indicating here is selfless servanthood love as illustrated for us and defined to us by our Lord Jesus, who selflessly paid the ultimate price to show us what love is by dying on the cross for us when we were totally unworthy. That is the love Paul instructs us to walk in if we are going to live wisely, if we're going to live as children of light. See, one of the things that disturbs me so much is that I see so many Christians, Christians in the media and the talking heads on news channels who, who claim Christ, and Christians on social media, whether they're celebrities or just people I know, I see them, and they're angry, and they're opinionated, and they are judgmental, and they are harsh, and they are unforgiving, and they are unlistening, they are uncaring, and they're in your face. They're rude. Regardless of what they think they are doing or how they feel about what they are doing, they are not walking the path of humble, selfless, sacrificial love as demonstrated for us by our Lord Jesus. They are unwise and they are hindering the light of Christ. Because they aren't living wisely. They aren't, they aren't walking in the way of love. That's why Paul tells us you need to walk in the way of love. You see, in this world... You will encounter people who are just so very difficult to love. Maybe some of them even live in the same house. We'll start talking about that a little bit next week as we continue in Ephesians. See, that's when you are called to be wise, to walk the path of love, to love them, to give to them without return, knowing you're not going to get anything in return. You, you build them up and you pour into their lives even when they don't deserve it, even when they don't appreciate it. You love them. See, I, I'm not going to go into great detail here today because in the coming weeks, we're going to be looking at further passages in Ephesians that illustrate this really well. 
So we'll get to it uh, more in depth in the coming weeks. Suffice to say here, if we don't understand Paul telling us to walk in the way of love, if we don't understand Christ's love and make it a central pursuit in our lives, then nothing that Paul writes in this letter further on in the book of Ephesians will make sense. We won't want anything to do with it. And we don't uh, just say, yes, I am going to walk the way of love as demonstrated by Christ. If we don't do that, then we're going to rebel against Paul's instructions to love others, to submit to others. See, if you are wise, if you desire to live as one of God's children of light, you will open yourself up to these. You will, you will be open to what it means to walk in the way of love so that you might walk that path set before us by Christ himself. It's what it means to live wisely. It's what it means to be a, children, a child of light. So today, you know, uh, culminating just two weeks now of our teaching here, I tell you, go forth as children of light. Not a hint of immorality. And live wisely. Let us pray. Dear God, we do thank you so much for giving us Jesus Christ, through whom we are made pure. We are purified from our sins. They are lifted from us, God. And so now we come to you and we ask that you help us to live holy as children of light, God. Help us to put behind us the impurities that plague us. But God, help us also to see the light that we pursue and that we take to this world. O open our eyes, open our hearts so that we can be filled with your spirit, God. Uh, lead us to you. Uh, give us a hunger to seek you. To seek you in your word in time of prayer and meditation so that uh, we, we might know and understand what your will is. We would know what is good, what is right, what is true. And God uh, created in us just an overwhelming spring of thankfulness. God, when we are tempted uh, to go into the impurity, uh, bring to mind, bring to our minds all the things we are thankful for, that we might bring them and set it before you as a sacrifice of praise. God, most of all, we pray that you take our hearts of stone, or our hearts that are so calloused over, that are so uh, angry and selfish and just set off from others. God, we pray that you make them into hearts of flesh, that we would walk the way of love as you demonstrated through your son, Jesus Christ, when you sent him to us. Help us to love likewise, God. We pray it all in the name of your son, Jesus Christ.